Lac de Medine for the World Cup Classic in 2022. And this is the prestigious trophy that the anglers have been competing for. Made in 1998, I mean, it's had some great names and great anglers that have competed for this trophy over the years. And the prestige it now carries, when you see the, the excitement all the anglers have got and the anticipation that they've got as they catch fish during the competition, it really is something quite incredible right up into the last minute and then when they really know that they've won this trophy to see them lift it and uh, and the celebrations and the jubilation they've got but really some great names already over 24 years have competed for this trophy and as we prepare for our 25th anniversary next year when you think that 43 countries to date have been represented literally from all four corners of the world it really is something i'm very proud of and now we've also linked this to the environmental aspects that we've got, the shoreline cleanups that each and every angler that's involved in this uh, event has to do a shoreline cleanup as part of the conditions of entry into the event. That's, it's re-emphasising the true spirit that we have with angling spirit. Now, as we move forward, today is the final day of registration. And then from there tonight, we've of course got a great party. Uh, that's always a great occasion at this event. And then from there tomorrow is the all important peg draw and the anglers will then go out to the island where they'll be able to prepare for the start which will be at two o'clock on, on Monday local time and then the battle will commence. The weather conditions for the coming week are, are well, very interesting. Uh, there's a big low coming in, there's wind and rain that, that are going to be coming in during the week. That's what this lake needs. I know for sure when the wind blows here, that's when the big fish come out. So let's start this event and let's see who's going to be lifting this trophy at this year's event. So for us personally, World Cup Classic is always like one of the most difficult carp fishing events because you really need to show up your skills. You have a lot of features in the water. You have to be really thinking about every single move you do on the water and where you put your weight otherwise you don't catch a fish there's not a big amount of a fish so you really need to be really precise in everything that you do the really nice thing about Madin is so it's every year it's completely different competition you know last year it was wind was blowing this direction the fish were catching on the other side and and it was just not making that much sense but this year we have really another Another level of fishing, which is uh, which is really affected by the drop of the water, which is like I think 80 centimeters lower than the years before, almost one meter. So that's gonna open up some possibilities, and it's gonna make some uh, swims which were active previous years not that attractive this year, and and also the opposite way. So we're really looking forward to it, and I mean, it's gonna be about all about adapting and about showing your skills, and that's what we really like. So looking forward to it. We're here at the World Cup Classic. We are uh, preparing for the uh, the 24th event because next year will be the 25th event, and that's an anniversary. So um, I am looking forward to celebrate with Ross all these years that are behind us and the future of World Cup Classic. Uh, I really hope, and he doesn't say much about it. I really hope it will be here at Medin. I think so. Uh, it's supposed to, but I know that Ross wants to organize a big event with lots of teams and, and making it the biggest thing that he ever organized. So it is always, it will be a surprise whether it's going to be here or not. If not, I think then uh, it will be the year after that. So looking forward to the event where we celebrate the 25th anniversary, I think if it's not going to be that one, then the year after it, it will be an event huge and I really hope it will stay in France. It would be too big for Medine. I would say I'd love to go back to the Orient Temple and Amans. But that's just in the, in, in the corner of my eye where I'm looking at that direction. Uh, protože jezdím hodně na, na závody po celé Evropě. Uh, I'm competing a lot of competitions and the WCC event is the most prestigious for me. So I'm really happy that I'm here like every year. Závod uh, ze všech. A uh, je to z toho důvodu, že... One of the most important reason is because of the difficulty of this competition. It's got huge tradition and I love this lake, like the Madine. Zero. A letošní ročník? This year will be very similar if I compare it with the previous years, but there is big difference in the water level, so it will be very difficult for all anglers to approach this competition. Last year you could see that 
Lots of anglers were counting that the carps will be caught in the deep waters and they were very surprised because lots of carps kept in the shallow waters and anglers were very surprised about it. This year I think the carps will be keeping in the deep part of the lake so we'll see how it will be. So registration is now complete and we're at a time of the event and a part of the event that everybody's relaxed, enjoying themselves, we've got the food that's arrived for them this evening and drinks and a bit of music being played uh, behind us at the moment. So relaxed and people coming from all four corners of the world, they're getting together and making new friends and uh, reacquainting themselves with old friends as well. But tomorrow it all changes of course, there's the peg draw. And after the peg draw, well, they're all happy at the moment, which is great, but there'll be expectations that, oh my God, oh no, I've drawn this one, and great, fantastic, I'm gonna win the event, I've drawn that peg. We've seen all that before, and over 24 years, we've seen all sorts of different things happen with the excitement of people jumping up and down on the stage, really excited when they've drawn a peg, they thought, this is the winning peg. Well, drawing the peg is one thing, but then they need to go to the pegs and catch the fish. It's not all about just about the peg draw tomorrow. There's a whole competition to be run, and tonight is the time they can relax and chill out, because tomorrow it gets serious. Sunday morning here at Lac de Medine, you can feel the tension amongst all the anglers. The reason being, it's the time for the peg draw. This is the time that they do, having actually pulled out the peg from the draw, it will decide on where they go for the next week in this World Cup Classic. Now, clearly, it will be interesting to see how some of the anglers accept the pegs they've got, the, the ones that the favoured pegs that they've got as well, and then to go from there, of course, to the swims, and then when they're at the swims, how they fish them because it's not just the question, I've got a great peg, you still need to catch the fish when you're on those swims. Anyway, look, I need to go and get this sorted out, get the peg draw started, and get the, uh, the great excitement there is amongst all these anglers. You'll see the hands trembling as they come up on stage. I love this bit, it's great, and then it's down to them. Anyway, look, that's enough for me for the moment. I'm gonna get on and uh, get the peg draw started, and uh, put a lot of these guys, just so that they know where they're gonna be fishing. It's gonna be interesting and exciting. So the peg draw is now completed and the anglers are now able to go out to the swims. Now, what was incredible was to see the different reactions to those anglers on the, on the stage. There were kind of lots of anticipation and uh, the, the, the different preconceived ideas in terms of which swims they wanted. Now the reality is dawning. They know that the exact swims they're going to. So of course, this is a time for reflection. They've got to work out their strategy and their planning. And, uh, over, uh, and how they're actually going to fish the areas that they've got. Because at the end of the day, they can only fish the water they've got for the fish they've got in front of them. So that, that really is down to that. So this is where the, the great skills of these anglers start to come through. You can see behind me some of the anglers getting ready to go out to the different areas of the lake, on the islands and on the dark side, uh, where they need to be transported by boat. You can see that vast quantities of equipment there are, be it rods and reels and bivvies and bed chairs and everything else, and also huge quantities of bait. 
Well, what's interesting about that is the fact that although they've got huge quantities of bait, some of them, they, that some of the anglers use very, very little bait. What they've got is they've got a good selection of different baits to take into account every, every uh, type of uh, uh, feeding pattern that the carp may be on, or even them trying to anticipate, of course. So uh, it's, it's a lot of strategy that's involved. Because, of course, when the bait goes in, it goes in and you can't take it out. But if you put a little bit of bait in, you can always add more, which is also very important. So this is the last night that anglers have got the opportunity of getting some rest in in preparation for the start of the competition, which is actually at two o'clock tomorrow. So it's not long to go. So all the, all the preparation, all the, all the year of waiting since last year's event is about to come to a conclusion. And of course, one of the things I actually like to do is start the event, get the rocket up, get the explosions going, and, uh, and then see all the anglers go out onto the water to see what they've got in front of them and get their baits in. And then find out who's going to catch the first fish and the biggest fish of this competition. Well, this is the moment, a year in the waiting. We're all ready. I'm on the winner's peg of the defending champions from 2021, ready to defend their title for 2022. Great excitement. They've got a really good peg. This is a peg that's produced fish in the past before. So I can't wait to light this, get that. It's going to go bang, and then it all starts. World Cup Classic 2022 will be underway. 15 seconds, everybody. Right, OK. This one as well. World Cup Classic 2022-24 edition. Now started. Officially started. That's it. World Cup Classic 2020 is It's really emotional at the moment, uh, just having actually started the World Cup Classic 2022. Uh, having been here at Lac de Medine now for over 25 years and uh, when I first came to, to, to knock on the door and say, hey, I've got an idea, uh, I've got an idea about running a, a big fishing championship, a carp fishing event as well, um, to be here all these years on, uh, get, getting ready and having actually started this year's event. Um, you know, we're, we're on the cusp of something really special. When I started the event all those years ago and it was called a classic, you know, that was just the title. But now I think honestly, I think not just by my opinion, but those, those anglers that are competing in it, the sponsors, the partners, and those that have been watching, it really deserves that title as we prepare for the 25th anniversary of the World Cup Classic. We've got some good weather. We're going to actually get a nice southerly into this bay just to our right here. And uh, as long as we've got a decent enough depth, then we hope there's going to be a few carp around. We've got our lucky mascot, Angel, yeah. here. So first time for these two. Um, so yeah, you, you're really excited, aren't you? Yeah, can't smile wide enough. And this event with the free fish rule, you just never know what's going to be in front of you. You know, we could have some big fish in the area. And because the water level has dropped about, we're thinking about two and a half foot, six, seven hundred mil. They're thinking that the fish that can be in areas, maybe in different areas this year, um, but out in front of us in the deeper bit, you know, we could have some nice weed beds out there to have a go at. So yeah, it's all going to be once we can get out there in the boat, try and find some spots, and they go from there, really. What's your tactic and your plan? To oh, we're not going to tell you that. <laughs> that we're going to use a single piece of sweet corn popped up about that big on all six rods. No. <laughs> so yeah, so get this feed out there quickly and let everybody else copy us. Um, tactic wise, again, we don't know at the minute. So if we get out there and there is barren, like, you know, no weed, then we've got a plan for that. That could be baiting a whole wide area. We'll all talk about it. So we've got probably 10 different strategies and we don't know what we're going to use until we go out there and see what the terrain's like. Mm. So yeah, don't know at the minute, ask us on Friday. 
<laughs> yeah. How are you guys feeling about the World Cup Classic 2022? It's the beach again. <laughs> 2015, we also were here just uh, about 30 meters to the right hand side. And yeah, we know it, but that was the time we can't go that far as we can go now. So yeah, it's a little bit surprising what's uh, further there than we fished before. And yeah. Searching. But it's awesome. It's Searching awesome. The winding is nice. Yeah. When it comes, it's awesome for us. I think so. For the next three days when the wind will blow directly here, it should be the best time for sure, yeah. So what's your, what's your plans? How are you going to catch some carp? To find some good spots, that's the first yeah. thing. Going to the boat and uh, make a, a plan outside there. Find the right uh, spots and yeah. We are good prepared. We, we think in the wheat outside at 80 meters and outside and 350 we must look what brings and we look for mussels and also pirate treasure <laughs> <laughs> like the last year <laughs> and you'll be using Lawrence equipment for sure yeah I think it's it's very good it's important to find spots and uh, Lawrence it's really nice it helped us. There's a little much more deep than it was before because the last two years we were uh, at the other side and there wasn't, you can't just look down <laughs> to find some spots, that's great, but that's not uh, we are expecting here. No run, no, no fun. No run, no fun. <laughs> WCC 2022, full gas. <laughs> One of the things we're particularly proud of uh, with the World Cup Classic is the media coverage we've got and, uh, and the audience we're actually reaching out to. The audience we've got is anywhere between 42 and 52 million people. Uh, it's a huge global audience we've got. We've got great media teams on site that are responsible for obviously covering the event and bringing the action live to everybody both during the competition and then of course there's the still photographs that get taken at, that actually help make all the, uh, the, the magazines and different things and share with uh, people all over the world the incredible sight that Lacta Medina is, the fantastic fish there are here. But really the media side of things is very important. It's one thing uh, having and running an event that's uh, maybe a great event, but if nobody knows about it, it's the best kept secret. And that's what this is the polar opposite of. We want to share this incredible experience with everybody. And that's why the media team is such an important part of what we do here. It's really important if you want to keep up to, to date with exactly what's going on, follow us on the social networks. Facebook, Instagram, the YouTube channel we've got and everything else that's going on. There's the live leaderboard of course as well, so if you want to keep with the up-to-date action, check on it. Millions and millions of clicks on the live leaderboard. Keep following, it's going to be exciting. Now we're down here at peg number 28. Uh, we've, uh, we've come down, as you can see, 16.5 kilos is the first fish of the competition. There's uh, Julian Cat, M Michael Roth and Alexander Roth from Cat River. Brilliant, really exciting. Normally, as I said here earlier on, the, the size of the first fish that comes out is just over five kilos. But this is a cracking 16 and a half kilos. And it is a stunning fish, absolutely a stunning fish. We're on the dark side. So when we had the call, it's like, it, if you can imagine, it's the point, the furthest, the most difficult for us uh, from, from the admin point of view and from the media team to get to. It's like a 45 minute walk through the woods. But uh, anyway, it's certainly worth it to come and look at this stunning fish. Look at that, that's absolutely incredible. You see what I mean about the scale pattern going along the top there? That really is a stunning looking fish. It's going to be a long night. We've just been to peg number 28 and we, we just weighed a, weighed a fish there, which is really exciting. It's the first fish of the competition. And then we get another message, fish on, on peg number 29. So we've come over here. It's for the Spanish team. I love going to see the Spanish team because they've got some great jamón, they've got some great wine, and now some great fish. Yo soy muy contento para ti. Eso es el segundo pesca en esta competición. Y uh, es importante para ti, ¿no? Muy importante, además es nuestra primera común en el campeonato, muy bonita, una pelota. Ha hecho un picado. <risa> a 20 minutos de meter las cañas y la verdad que estamos muy emocionados y esperando otra vez y tenemos suerte esta noche. 
uh, really excited. I mean, they, they had the rods in for just over to 20, 30 minutes, and uh, it's it's all really exciting for them. Uh, for them to be here at the World Cup Classic is something very special, and they're, they're very emotional about it. Vamos, chavales! Yeah! Anima al resto de equipo. Vamos. Vamos. Okay. Well, last night was the uh, an interesting night, let's say. It was the first night of the competition this year. What we found, and what's really interesting, is the one and only Carol Nickel and uh, Jan Dadek uh, also caught fish from a, a peg that has to be said, it wasn't one of the favoured areas, but not only did they catch a fish, it was a, a 19 kilo carp, which is a great fish to catch, uh, they also caught a 12 kilo carp as well. So they've got two fish, they're currently in the lead at the moment. Then, as we went on to through the night, obviously, into the early hours of the morning, when the, we got the results in, uh, 25.2 kilos is the biggest fish that's currently been uh, caught in this competition so far. And that was caught on the, uh, on the opposite side of the island as well. So again, an area that wasn't particularly fancied, but that's really, really interesting. Fish are coming out from shallow areas and areas that traditionally they haven't been caught from before. On the small island, there was a fish that was caught uh, just over 20 kilos. We were, we were trying to judge what was going on. We got some great footage of that as the, as the fish was taken out of the water and weighed. But so yeah, just over 20, 20 kilos from the small island, which again, another one of the areas that wasn't particularly fancied in the, in the peg draw, but certainly they're very happy now. Well, as you can see behind me, the weather conditions are wet and windy and uh, there's, a, there's another front coming in uh, this afternoon. There's a low, it's going to get wet, more winds coming in. Now that actually stirs up Medine and we know that Medine fishes best with big wind and big rain. So anyway, all to fish for. We're excited about seeing what's going to be going on. We're excited to see what fish are going to come out and from where, but uh, it's certainly interesting times here at Lac de Medine at the moment. So down on peg number three, I'm here with the team from Canada. Great to see you down here and uh, great to see you on peg number three with some fish, but not just one, not two, but three. Yeah, it's going really good so far. Still like only 26 hours in and we had one fish early this morning and then it seemed to slow down a bit through the day and we had back to back fish maybe 15 minutes apart. Crazy battles took us into like the harbor, into the boats, tangled in anchors. <laughs> we ended up dragging them out and put them in the net, so. Well, as, uh, as we can see and as we can feel, we've got a bit of Scottish mist coming down, a bit of dampness, and uh, nevertheless, it's been windy. How are you coping with the conditions here? Uh, it's not too bad because all of our rigs seem to be, all, all of our traps or settings seem to be like on the inside of the wall. So once we pass that wall, like you've got some pretty good waves, but with the wind that we have, it seems to be a little bit protected. And it seems like the fish are just following in that wind, hitting that wall and coming right around to where we have our baits, so. So, tactics, you got them worked out. You're clearly catching fish. Uh, and, uh, and you caught a catfish last night as well. Yeah, like an 80 to 100 pounder. <laughs> 20, 20 minute battle on the boat by myself. It was pretty wild. So, uh, coming from Canada, what are the folks feeding back home? Uh, a lot of support. Yeah, everybody's uh, cheering us on and hoping that we would ha have some fish. And it seems that after the first day that the fish are here. So it's just to stay consistent and keep our traps going out and rods going out. So. You're leading the World Cup Classic, so you've got the Canadian flag right at the top at the moment. Yeah. What, what would it mean for you to win this event? It'd mean quite a bit, because we came here, me and Jared, in 2018 on a qualifying win, and we were on the big island, and we had absolutely no fish, um, a lot of weed, tough conditions, and our whole sector didn't seem to really produce any fish that year. So to be able to come back and get on fish on a nice peg um, really makes a difference, and uh, everybody, like I said, is rooting us on. So. I'm on Peg 71, I'm on the Big Island, and I'm with the great and one and only Carol Nickel and Jan Dadek. Yet again, you've performed, you've, got, you've caught fish. I don't want it to, to sound big-headed, but you know, obviously if there are fish, we are going to catch them. So it, it now depends on how many of them there are in the area and you know, how, how uh, quickly we can catch them then. So the two fish you've caught so far, how big are they? We've caught 19 and a half kilos and we've caught the other one was 14, around 14 kilos. After the draw, it was quite unexpected that, that we would catch fish that quick. It is actually our, as we say, personal best, you know, of how quickly we've caught fish on World Cup Classic. Because before that it was first night two o'clock and now it was just after five and a half hours of fishing. So. It happened quickly. So what is your secret? What, what is it that you've got that you do that others don't? 
To tajemství spočívá... The secret is fairly simple and it is that you have to lift carp fishing, go fishing competitions and go fishing different lakes and get experience because experience is something you can't buy, it's not something that you can get to know from somebody or that you can't, you can't read it anywhere. Tak získat prostě musíte furt jezdit na ryby a na závody. You've won the World Cup Classic as champions, uh, you've won the champion of champions and all those titles, there's thousands of people, millions of people that would love to have that accolade. What does that mean to you? Pro nás to znamená začátek. So World Cup Classic food for us is something special because it is still, even though we are visiting other competitions, you know, many different competitions, then it is still the most prestigious one. And uh, for us to become champions, you know, it is actually part of, let's say, a journey that, that we have set up for ourselves in the, in the past before to manage to win it more than just once, you know, as up until now no, nobody managed it, so it is still something good where you know we can be first in in that and uh, yeah it's a uh, it's uh, it's part of our life as well every year you know and it's 10th year that, that that we've been together now uh, on world cup classic first one was 2012 on balsino next year 25th anniversary for the world cup classic 25 years special year budeme rádi s klukama když budeme moc přijet znovu na tehle ten speciální ročník a Ah, uh, sorry, I heard some sound of Paco. We're looking forward, forward to participate on the 25th World Cup Classic. You know, it's a big anniversary for the whole competition and it is for us part of our life now that every year we are going and it will be another one where we will celebrate the sport of carp fishing once again. I'm on peg number 14, I'm with uh, Thomas Slavik and his partner in the World Cup Classic 2022. Um, uh, you're, you're on a, an interesting peg here, Thomas. I can see there's plenty of features and things around here. Yeah, I gotta say the, the peg is really special. It's never been caught before here, so, so that's really good news for us. And uh, I gotta say there is a big ridge going into the water with so many options. And when you're a creative person and you like to fish in extreme conditions, this is exactly for us. So, so I think we're really stoked to be on this pack. We don't know what it's gonna bring, but we know for sure we're gonna have fun here. In this area where on the start of the event was really windy, so it's really hard to see anything. And when you're, when you're kind of uh, using your uh, sonar, it really is just the only eye you have. Talk us through how you've actually got this, uh, th this unit set up. I just really like the, the, the new glass screen. It's the first game changer for me. Like you can click it uh, no matter if it rains, if it's cold, if it's windy or too hot. It just reacts uh, very fast and uh, immediately. So it's also the processor works really great. And uh, I gotta say, uh, this setup you, you have there now, it's like uh, one of my favorites. Uh, we have a down scan on the left side always a map on the right side that you know where, is, where are your uh, waypoints, uh, your trails, where you're going and, and you always are aware 110% where you are. Yeah. If you're in your sector or outside of sector, it can be sometimes prone, so it's very crucial for me, so I, I got it there uh, with all the Genesis map. It's really cool that you can download from social map or from Genesis, you can download the social map, which is just for free. You download it to your Echo Sounder and there you are, uh, you have a complete map of, of, the, of, the, lake. of the lake and uh, as you can see the, the depth palette I created there is just a little bit different but it's my personal, uh, personal preference you know uh, that I can see I made it a little bit more sensitive so I can see every single every single depth, depth change, change. And, and, and it really works great. So what you've got is you've got side scan down here, you've got conventional sonar here and then you've got your, your map with the, with the, yeah. with the Genesis mapping. Uh, I also like to click on the, on a typical down scan and go to down down scan fish reveal. Yeah. So you can immediately see uh, what kind of uh, or what size of a fish is there, and the new fish reveal is working really great. So it can really it's really advanced if I can compare it with the, with the old software and old version. You can add everything like your boat speed, your uh, water temperature to every single screen, which is giving you options. If you want to set up a new screen, it's, it's pretty easy. You just go here to your favorite charts yeah. and then you just click edit and then you, then you actually add a new one, which is here plus. Yeah. And then you can go, let's, let's do like, uh, 
You can put a sonar on, you can put a down scan with the new fish reveal and you can put a side scan. This is if I, if I, uh, if I, uh, this is this is how you can change the, the order of it. So yeah. I, I prefer more this way. Yeah. So here you can, this is, it, when I'm searching and I don't care in which part of a sector I am, this is my favorite one. Right, I'm gonna leave you for the moment because you need to use this out there and, uh, and go catch some fish. But no, it's great to see the, the, the level and the depth you've gone into uh, and the importance you're attributing to um, these, uh, these Lawrence HDS live units. Yeah. Currently at Lac de Medine, I'm on the Big Island, and it's a place that many anglers are competing for this year's World Carp Classic. Now, what is very interesting is that, of course, to run the event, we need really good marshals, and uh, that's one of the key aspects of it. But uh, where I am at the moment, in particular, I've got two guys I'd like to introduce you to. There's Owen and Leighton. Well, these aren't just any two people. These are two people that have actually been involved from Hythe Marine Services back in Portsmouth. Tell me about Hythe Marine Services. Well, it's a company based in the dockyard. They offer great apprenticeships for people, especially like ourselves. And they give us opportunities like this, where we get to build trophies for Sea Angling Classic. Now look where we are. Now, talking about the Sea Angling Classic, uh, that was a trophy that you made. Uh, it was made out of uh, recycled material, but not any recycled material. What was it made out of? Um, it was made out of recycled material from uh, HMS Prince of Wales, the HMS Middleton, and the Victory. HMAS victory, you mean Nelson's flagship? Yes. So, tell me about the trophy itself and uh, and how that came about. Well, we started off with a prototype that we were given to build and we made the prototypes, we knew where the errors were found, so we had them before we actually made the proper one. But then once we started making the proper one, we realised working with stainless is much different than normal steel. We encountered a few other problems, but we got around them easily. Then we ended up with the final product, which looked amazing. He even surprised us. Yeah. <laughs> it surprised us. So, from Portsmouth to Lac de Medine, you know, you're, you're here, you're, you're involved in a World Carp Classic event on, on an island. Yeah, to me it seems so surreal because obviously I've been fishing my whole life myself and I've, I've always wanted to see fish from out of France at the carp. And my first fish I saw was a 25.2 kilo beautiful mirror and I was stunned. I'm currently in the Bear Creek section of the lake. Yesterday we were out on the boat and uh, there's a call that came through, there's a peg uh, 24 that had caught a fish. And this is an area that uh, traditionally has caught many fish over the years, uh, but hadn't been performing particularly well. Now, as that fish came in yesterday, we suspected that fish, more fish were going to get caught here. So, then after that, during the course of the night, yes, they've started to come in. There's quite a few fish being caught from this area now. So peg uh, 24's caught more, peg 20's caught now, then the biggest fish of the competition so far, and there's another fish being caught on peg 17. So they're starting to show in this area now, which is very interesting. So it's really close in this event, and grams really do matter. In fact, a few years ago, we had a tie with the exact weight over the three fish that get caught, that count. So in this competition, it's the cumulative weight of the three biggest fish that get caught uh, are the, the score that counts. So even if a team catches three, four, five, six fish, it's the three biggest ones that count. So it's really important. Those grams really do matter. Last night, you're out looking at the stars. Tell me that yeah, story. Yeah, so, so basically, me and Joe were standing out here trying to listen to a few fish. Um, and stargazing, because it was so crystal clear skies. We see satellites and a few bits and pieces. Then we see a couple of shooting stars. So we didn't talk to each other. Joe made a wish and I made a wish. Mine was just to get a bite. Anyway, two hours later, I got a bite. Went out and netted it. On the way back, we got to the bank. Joe then said to me, his wish was a 45 pound plus common. Not being greedy. Then we hadn't seen the marshals. It was then weighed and it turned out to be 45 and a half pound common, which was just mind blowing. Written, mind written, written, in, the stars, written yeah. in the stars, yeah. Um, two hours later, two and a half hours later, me other rod next to that same rod has, has gone. Um, unbelievable, biggest fish of the competition so far. 25.9 kilo. So how are you feeling? Um, oh. I can't, it's not even sunk in. Yeah. I'm too concentrating on the next bite. I just, <laughs> I, want, I want the next bite and once I get that, I think I'll sit back just a little bit. Um, <laughs> it's starting to realise what it means. Yeah, now. what, what, it, means, what, it, could mean what it could yeah, mean. Yeah. Yeah. What would it actually mean for you to win this event? Because, oh. you know, one more fish could put you right just up there. Can't tell you. I really can't. I'll tell you when we catch one more big enough. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get it in the bag.
We're about to show you something you've never seen before with the World Cup Classic, and it really is incredible, sensational and dramatic. We were over three kilometers away. We had a, had a, a message to say there was a fish on on peg number 28. Send up the drone, sent the drone down, and what you're about to see is the entire fish capture from the guys going out in the boat, actually catching the fish, getting the fish in the net, and then taking it back to the shore. Now bear in mind, this was filmed from three kilometers away. Quite sensational. Now that now takes the team from France into second place in the World Cup Classic. The clock is ticking. Can they get those extra few kilos to go right to the top and take over the English team that they're at the moment? Or will they stay second? Or will there be another team that catches them? It's PEG 86. It's great to be back down here again. The team from Austria, because to see the Austrian flag flying right at the top of the leaderboard is important. Yes, yes. It, it's great. It's a pleasure for us to present Austria at the WCC. And um, this fish is, is beautiful for us. Um, we make a jump in the leaderboard and we have two nights more. And now we are hoping to get on the top. We only catch in the night about 12 o'clock and today is earlier, so we hope this would be a really, really good night. You've got lots of really good anglers uh, within Austria and great supporters of the World Carp Classic over the years. You know, to get the Austrian flag actually on the podium as well and possibly, you know, clinch the, the World Carp Classic trophy, that's, uh, that, that, that would be something quite special. I think it would be the, the biggest thing for us. Uh, for this thing we come here, not for a company, we come for Austria. We come for Austria and would present Austria and bring Austria the first time in the history of the WCC on the top. We're just down on peg number 86 and we've just weighed the fish down there, uh, which has taken that team, the Austrian team, into second place. Whilst we were doing that, we heard some jubilation and some shouting on peg 84. And that's the peg with Lee Jackson and Stefan Jonti. So we've shot over here and they've got a fish. The great thing is it's, uh, it's, gonna, it's a fish that will count. It will put them on the leaderboard. Not the biggest fish that they've ever caught. Not the biggest fish that they've caught at Lac de Medine. I'll tell you what. <laughs> That carp doesn't know it's not 20 kilo, does it? <laughs> <laughs> and this man is a star. He, he was, it was very difficult to land because of the weed, really heavy weed. And uh, eventually he had to hand line it to the land in it. <laughs> so, well done, Thank Nico. You. Well done, Steph. So, you know what it's like uh, to catch fish in this, this event. You've yep. won the event before. Yeah. And you know how quickly uh, catching one or two fish changes things. That's right. 
It's never over till the fat lady sings, is it? <laughs> Not at all. So, yeah, but it's, it's, it's great. I mean, it's great. We get the English lads, I think, on the leaderboard, um, right at the top of the leaderboard, and it's just great. It's, it's just it's taking part on it, you know. It's uh, so you got an, an Anglo-French team. There's no <laughs> English anglers and no French anglers. There's yeah, family yeah, anglers. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. European team. That's yes. it. <laughs> Team Shimano. Yeah, Shimano Tribal. What's what's the products that you guys are currently using? So for rods, uh, the equipment that I'm using is uh, 10 feet rods, uh, three and a half lips, so pretty hard rods to get the line out of the of the weeds. I'm using the Shimano magnesium reels with a main braided line and then a shock leader from uh, fluorocarbon. Um, the reason why I'm using, I am using the braided line is to get it easily out of the weeds, to cut the weeds. I'm using a Shimano Kairiki in yellow and also uh, the, the Power Pro, the green Power Pro. Uh, I'm using different line colors to separate the, the rods so I can uh, untangle them if they get tangled. And that would be like my main equipment. George fishes a bit uh, differently. Yeah, I'm using nine foot rods. I like uh, smaller rods to play fish from the boat and for the reels uh, I'm using the new Shimano Ultegra XTE, really good reels also for this kind of uh, places where we want to fish longer range, 300-350 meters, lots of line capacity and for the line I'm fishing the Power Pro, I like to keep it more uh, discreet, I fish with the Power Pro uh, green moss color and yeah, uh, that's how we are doing it here. Good equipment, strong equipment to fight the fish on the on the weed. And even if we get a, a catfish, for example, to have yeah. a chance to land the fish, you need a, a pretty strong equipment. So for the last years, I've been using uh, only Shimano equipment and I feel pretty comfortable, pretty comfortable uh, fighting the fish. Um, I also use those rods in 10 foot, uh, in 10 feet uh, to to cast, and I reach uh, over 100 meters, so it's mm. pretty good for a 10 feet rod. Yep. Uh, I've also landed uh, many, many catfish, uh, sturgeon, and other big fish, and I've never had problems. So I really like this this uh, combo from the takes for with the magnesium, and I would for sure keep uh, using it for many years. Yeah. It's good to have uh, an equipment you can rely on. Uh, no matter what the lake is, what the features that are that you the have. The conditions. Yeah, the conditions, you can really put pressure on them, on the rods, on the reels. And they won't also, break. It's yeah. a really re reliable material. Good quality we've been. I think the first reels we bought from Shimano were like 2012. Yeah, the and X we've been using XSB, them. XSB, you know, XSB were. Yeah. And we are still using them, like we still have them at home, and they are really. Pff, yeah, fighting reels. The wind's starting to blow. They've caught a stunning fish here, and uh, it's not just any size of fish, it's one of the biggest fish of the competition so far. So, how are you feeling? Yeah, yeah overwhelmed aesthetic. with it. Yeah. <laughs> overwhelmed with that one. Yes. Yeah, if we can get like another fish or two, um, things could change around really a little bit, but we've, um, well, I'm more than happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> so is that the biggest Medine carp you've caught? That's my yeah. biggest Medine carp I've caught, yeah. And after catching a few small ones the last few days, they were getting smaller, they weren't getting bigger. <laughs> <laughs> they went from 8.9 to 6.4 <laughs> over a few, a few bites. But yeah, no, more might to get that. I knew it was a good fish the way it just it just took off. It didn't it worked, didn't just lock up and hold there, it was just going. So yeah, it had to be one of the hopefully what like one of the bigger ones and yeah, yeah, made up with it really. Fingers crossed we might get a might get another. We might get another one or two. That's it. So the hatch oh, is the, the hatches are battened down. Yep. You, you, yeah, yeah. You're ready for battle. We're ready. Yeah, we're ready. And yeah. you're certainly up on the leaderboard. Yep. And, yep. and the good thing is that actually puts you winning this section. Love right, it. okay, brilliant. Yeah. Right, okay. <laughs> Fantastic news, I'm down on pick 51 with a 23.7 kilo carp that's been caught with these guys here. Congratulations, really pleased for you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. So it's Friday, 
it's misty. And that was one of the questions actually, before we talk about the fish, why do we need a foghorn in the World Cup Classic? There we go, that's yeah. the answer. <laughs> it gets foggy here. Yes, of course. So, when did you catch the fish? I think it was uh, 10, 10 minutes before 8 in the morning. Ah, I think so too. Yeah, literally we was sleeping. <laughs> um, um, yeah, it was just uh, uh, one, three times of, of peeping. Like beep, yeah. beep, beep. Yeah, like a bream. Ah, it we was, thought. Right. was really nothing. It yeah. was beep, beep. It was nothing. Yeah. Right. We thought it was a bream. We get into our boat and uh, yeah. And until we are, was over the fish, we thought a bream or a tench, something like that. Uh, then Ronnie uh, put the rod up and we see, oh fuck, it's a good cup. <laughs> 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 and, Only the net under and yeah, then and it was then over. <laughs> yeah. A fish of that size. It's not a 20 kilo carp, stating the blindingly obvious, it's 23.7. Now, clearly, what, what is very interesting at the moment is the top five places in this competition that are leading are in five different sections. Of course. Now, having caught a carp of over 20 kilos, now, that really, I mean, you're up there, you yeah. know? We are in the game again, of course. I think, yeah. And at the last night, uh, we see it in the last years, it can change everything. Peg 32, of course, the dark side. Well, the mist is slightly rising at the moment, but uh, we're over here because there's been a really good fish being caught. And it's quite an intriguing story, this one. Of course, as you can see behind, behind me, there is mist, there is fog, and it's dark, and we're on the dark side. So there have been challenges that these anglers have had, but they've overcome them. Congratulations, uh, you've caught a really good fish here on the dark side on peg 32. Thank you, thank you. So, tell me about it. So last night you had a, uh, in the early hours of the morning, you had a, a, a run, it's a beep beep beep, beep. was have, it a good run? We have a, a it looked like a catfish run, uh, but uh, it was like with our, our, our alarm in the five o'clock in the morning. So when you get when we wake up, it was okay. Where to where, where to, go? to go? Because it's it's totally in two meters. You cannot see anything. It's uh, foggy, and it was uh, yeah. We try to go follow a line so we know where the fish is, and then uh, finally, when I pull it out, I saw it that it's not catfish. This is the carp. And did what happened? Did your heart start said, to beat? Please don't leave me. <laughs> <laughs> Come closer by me, and then I catch you. Right. And it was wow. I was like, uh, make a big song on the whole lake. You who? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's carp in my net, so I'm happy. Then I back home, uh, and then I say yes. It's not catfish. We were sitting down, relaxing, chilling out, and then we got a call. Peg 43 had a fish. But the first thing we wanted to check was how big it was. So the marshals came along, they've checked the weight of it, and I'm down here with the guys now because they're on the dark side. Remember how far that away is from HQ? We had to get the whole media team down. Why? Really importantly, because the fish safe court has taken them back into the lead of the World Cup Classic 2022. So I'm down here with Steve, who caught the fish, Paul and Paul. Guys, look, you know, this is now getting, you know, you really are going to the last few minutes, the last few hours of the event, and this particular fish has taken you into the lead. Eight hours to go, you know. We're aware that there's plenty of teams chasing up behind us. I'd rather have the numbers on the board and not have to catch the fish, but, you know, we, we're aware that it could be a winning score, but... But the thing is, what you've just said, you have got the numbers on the board, yeah. and therefore, you know, other teams have to chase you now. Correct, which is a nice situation for us. We, you know, it's gonna be disappointing if someone beats us, they beat us. <laughs> and I'll, I'll shake their hands, but uh, we want it to be us. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a, that's a great spirit of the event. And I think um, really the spirit that Angley Spirit have actually tried to create with the World Cup Classic. Good. But you know, Paul and Steve, I mean, you know, you're fishing as a, te as a team. It is a team event. Now, how are you feeling at the moment? I feel that we're not going to get any sleep tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is it down to 8 o'clock. You know, so you think this is the last fish you're going to catch? No, 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 we're going to have another one. You think you're going to catch yeah, another one? Yeah, bigger. It does seem that our window of opportunity is somewhere between 9 o'clock and 2 o'clock in the morning. We haven't had a bite after 2 o'clock. So we still have got another chance of another bite. Could it be bigger? Yeah, of course it could. So yeah, we're, we're going to try. 
<laughs> well, let's see. Look, this is really, really going to be going down to the wire. With the lead they've currently got, the Austrian team are going to be chasing them. Of course, there's the, another English team further on down the leaderboard that uh, one big fish could actually alter that and flip this right on its head. The Dutch teams are chasing. It really is going to be an exciting climax to this year's event. a very wet and windy peg 94 right at the end of the world cup classic 2022 it's uh, really great to be here and see a fish coming in with the guys that have caught this uh, it's a team from poland it's uh Szymek has actually caught this with the with his team members and uh, he's worked really really hard to catch this fish so pleased for him because he's, uh, he's been a great competitor in the event and this i know means so much to him He's caught many big fish over his year, uh, over the years, and this one, for sure, is a very important one. It's not massive, but not massive. beautiful. It's a beautiful fish. It's like beautiful fish. A lucky beautiful fish. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> there you go. It's kind of Yeah. Pick that up. <laughs> a real beauty and well a real deserved. beauty, yeah. <laughs> Jeez. We waited till the last yeah. couple few of minutes, minutes. <laughs> <laughs> during whole week. But well, at last, the we hard work we paid off. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> We've got two minutes to go towards the end of the event. The wind is getting up, the rain's coming down, but there is great excitement to see. There has been a fish being caught. The question is, is that going to be affecting the peg we're on at the moment? Are they actually going to win the event? Well, we're not sure at the moment, but what I am going to do is I'm going to finish the event from here, and uh, then, then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see what's going on. Classic 2022 is at the end. I'm on peg 43. Guys, come forward because I have to say, unofficially, this is unofficial yet, you are being declared World Cup Classic Champions of 2022. Which is lovely. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> unofficially. We'll quite celebrate when it's official. Come here. So, so how, how have you been feeling these last few hours? You caught a fish <laughs> last night. Yeah. So, Talk, yeah. talk me through the last few moments. Not very pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> you going to visit other pegs with fish and things like that. And we don't know. There could be something caught, cool, as you say. We'll wait for it's official. But at the moment, we're very, very pleased. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's, it's fairly official at the moment. I'm not getting any reports of other fish. There is another fish that's been caught, but uh, I don't think it's going to affect the results. So on the basis, it's, it's, it's unofficial official. Yeah. Can you just celebrate it? <laughs> <laughs>